Hello dear friends, I'm Daisy Victoria and this is Elizabeth Woodville or at least a dress like the one that she wears in the famous painting. I was inspired to make this dress because I recently had come upon a great deal on some very pretty black velveteen. Furthermore, I've been watching a lot of documentaries on the English monarchy and I thought to myself, you know what, I know what I need to do. I need to cosplay Elizabeth Woodville. Elizabeth Woodville was the Queen Consort of England from 1464 to 1483. She was married to King Edward IV and it's actually kind of interesting, her story, because she was not born of a rank that one might expect one to become the Queen Consort. She was actually one of Edward's subjects when she married him, and she was said to be very, very beautiful. Elizabeth Woodville was also the grandmother of the ever-famous Henry VIII. Her daughter, Elizabeth of York, married Henry VII, and they are the parents of Henry VIII. Another interesting fact about Elizabeth Woodville is that she's the mother of two princes. One was actually Edward V as he was proclaimed king for a brief time. And these two princes, Edward V and his brother, are known as the princes in the tower and it's actually a murder mystery that was never solved. So there's a lot of interesting speculation on what exactly happened and it's obviously quite political a sort of real Game of Thrones like so much of history was. The famous painting of Elizabeth Woodville, which I based this costume on, was painted in about 1472. The dress she is wearing really reminds me of the Burgundian court fashion, which was seen in the Duchy of Burgundy as well as throughout the Netherlands during this time. So I actually went to my research on those dresses to get a lot of my ideas for this one. The hat she's wearing, it looks exactly like a truncated henin, which is typical for Burgundian fashion. So I completely based the hat on information from that era. And I actually tried out a new method when I was making this hat, which I kind of wanted to try. And I'm very excited to finally try it. I really love Burgundian court fashion and making this sort of variation on it was really exciting. I'm going to show you guys the process of making this dress. The brocade I found for this project was actually sort of a tan color and I wanted it to be gold so I purchased some dye and I dyed it myself. Here's the fabric going into the dye bath and I actually used the instructions on the package of Rit Dye, so nothing really super special, just um, following directions. And this worked out very well. It turned my tan fabric into a beautiful gold. This is the fabric that I will be using for the cuffs and the collar of my dress, as well as in the hat. Now I'm cutting out my dress using my tried and true pattern. This is actually the same pattern that I have in my medieval kirtle 14th century tutorial and I'm actually adjusting it to add a little bit more width because this dress is going to be belted at the waist and I don't want it to be quite as fitted as the other dress is. Here I'm just making sure that the bottom of my gores, which are basically extensions that are going to go on the sides, the front and the back of the skirt, are lined up with the curvature of the rest of the skirt pieces. And I'm cutting my gores as triangles of fabric because that way they will extend the flare of the overall skirt. Next I am cutting out my sleeves. I am using my tried and true sleeve pattern and the instructions on drafting that are in my tutorial for the medieval kirtle. It's the same sleeve actually that I use for that one. Once I've attached a gore to the side of the skirt, you can see how it just opens up here 
and it makes the skirt have a little bit more volume. Next, I'm sewing the sides together on the dress, and basically I'm sewing the two sides together so that there's a gore in between them, extending the skirt there. And I'm doing that with the front and the back also, sewing them together where there's a triangular gore in between all the way to the hem so that the skirt has extra volume in all four regions. Here you can see the front. I've actually left it open above the gore. That way I will be able to get into and out of the dress because it is not totally fitted, but it is still fitted enough. I need an opening there. Next, I'm going to work on the sleeves. I have a side back seam on my sleeves and I'm pinning that all the way down because these sleeves are not going to have any opening at the wrist, they're just going to slide right over my hands. Next I'm creating a pattern for my sleeve cuffs. I want the cuffs to fit at the bottom of the sleeves and then I want them to be a little bit bigger at the top so they're not quite as skinny as the sleeve at the end up there. I'm just trimming my pattern here, making sure things look all right. And then finally, I am labeling my pattern because I want to know what this is later. Next, I'm cutting out my cuffs from my brocade, which you saw I dyed this gold color. I'm cutting out two pieces per cuff, so there's an outer fabric and a lining fabric, and I will also be cutting an interlining to put in between those. Next, I'm working on the collar for my dress. Now, it might have been smarter to go ahead and make this pattern before I sewed all the pieces together, but we'll make it work. It'll be fine. So I'm just basically laying out the neckline of my dress and using that as a guide to create a pattern on my muslin. And then I'm just kind of checking it here because I did this finagling method instead of laying out the flat pieces. So I just want to make sure that it sits all right and it drapes the way I want it to. Next I'm measuring out how wide I want the collar to be and I'm making this as sort of a generic collar pattern so I have this for use on future burgundian gowns as well. Next I'm cutting out the pattern from my lovely gold brocade and I actually decided to alter it a little bit and make it a little longer and then to taper it in at the front a little bit sort of like in the portrait. So I'm still leaving my pattern as the standard, but just extending as I cut from my brocade. Here I am inserting my sleeves. So I'm just kind of matching these up, you know, the top of the sleeve to the arm side of the dress and then I'm setting those in and sewing them. And these match up very well because of the way my pattern was drafted. Here you can see how the dress is looking so far. I think it's really lovely. And now I'm kind of seeing what the collar looks like to check if I want to maybe adjust anything. And here I am cutting out the interlining finally for my collar. I'm using this fabric I actually had lying around. It's a white cotton, it's sort of a very light canvas type of material and it's working very well to hold the shape of the collar and the cuffs. Here I'm cutting out the cuffs using the pattern that I created. And here are all of my pieces cut out and some of them are already edged because I actually attached the interlining to the lining. And now I'm going to prepare the cuffs by sewing them into tubes and then I'm going to sew them together after they are sewn into tubes. For the collar, I'm not going to sew it into a tube first because I do have that front opening so I don't want it to be connected there. This is what the cuffs look like after I have sewn them into tubes and here are my collar pieces. 
Next, I'm going to attach the lining to the front side of the collar. I'm just pinning this all the way around and leaving it open in the front because I want it to be open with the opening of the dress. To make the cuffs, I'm actually going to sew them wrong sides together at the top here because that way that'll be a nice clean seam where I can turn it right side out and then I'll be able to attach the bottoms by hand onto the sleeves themselves. And here we go! I already sewed these together and turned them and they fit quite nicely on my little wrists. Here's the collar and I'm gonna try to show you what it looks like on the inside if you can see there. It's got the interlining attached to the lining and then it's got another layer of brocade and those are sewn together and then they are turned right side out making sure to clip the corners and the curves. Next I'm going to attach the collar to the dress. So I'm doing this at the neckline since that is where a collar belongs and I'm just making sure that everything lines up and that all of my seams are nice and hidden. I do like to do as much hand stitching visibly as possible on my historical garments, so when I'm doing my machine stitching, I try my best to hide it. And on this particular gown, I'm making sure that all of the machine stitches around the top of the garment are completely hidden. And as I attach the collar, there is actually some hand sewing that I do to make sure that the collar is attached and laying the way it needs to with only hand stitching visible. Here it is already attached, <laughs> yay. And I'll just attach the cuffs here. I'm trimming the collar because once I put it on the dress, I decided I actually wanted to change the shape a little bit, so there we go. I did not do a mock-up of the collar, and that is kind of silly, actually. So that's what I get for that. And now the sleeve cuffs are going on, and I'm actually hand-stitching them down here, so that way there are no visible machine stitches. I created the lacing holes in the front of the gown off camera because I wasn't feeling well and I took it over to the bed with me, but I used this all to poke the holes, that way you don't actually ruin the fibers in the fabric, and then I sewed around them all by hand. This is me making finger loop cord for the front of the dress, and if you'd like to see the full video on how to do finger loop braiding, I will link to that below so you can check that out and get an actual tutorial. This is a historical technique used for creating lacing cord and other pretty finishing cords for garments. Here I am lacing up my dress using the spiral lacing method and a small plastic yarn needle. And when I get to the top, I just tie it off and stick the rest inside the dress. Next I'm working on my belt. This fabric is very, very thick, so I'm actually making it single layered and I'm just kind of trying it on. Looks like about the size I want, all right. And then I'm making the placket also from a single layer of this fabric. These are some cute little metal filigree clasps I found to attach my belt. There are often belt buckles or clasps on these and I like the look of these ones. Here I've already sewn the pearls onto the placket, again off camera because I wasn't feeling so well and I took it into the bed with me. 
but you can see them and there is the belt already put on and those cute metal filigrees all attached by hand. All right, a sewing machine shot finally. This is the hem. I decided to hem this by machine. I do sometimes sew my hems by hand on historical garments, but for this one, I didn't really feel like it. And I think that most people aren't looking at my hem. If they are, I kind of wonder why they're looking at my hem but I didn't mind, so here I am. Because this is a curved hem, it is a little bit tricky to get it to properly behave. What I did is I surged the edge, I know, very historical, right? And then I'm using a pin here to make sure that that very small folded hem kind of stays where I want it as I am sewing. And I did this without ironing it first because that little pin method is adequate for this particular fabric I'm using. Now I'm lacing the dress back onto the mannequin now that it has been hemmed and I'm ready to do some final assembly. Alright, let's get out our lovely belt and put that on. I'm kind of testing whether I want to put the clasps in the front or the back. I ended up picking the back because it looks more like the portrait. And here's the placket. Now it's time for jewelry. I found some beads which I thought had the look of Elizabeth's necklaces. And these are real pearls here that I'll be using. I'm also using this gold filigree and these little red dot things. <laughs> I was not concerned with making the jewelry 100% historically accurate. I was more concerned with getting the look here, so that's why I'm just kind of putting it together the way I think it looks nice. And I'm using E6000 to add here all of these little stone pieces. It is very, very nice and holds things together very well. I do highly recommend it. Now I am creating those little pearl droplet things that go on the main pendant and I'm just doing that with my pearls here and some little head pins that I had already. Here I'm making that weird little flower thing on Elizabeth's other necklace, or at least my version of it. I'm just stringing these little teardrop shaped beads together to try to make them into what I think looks right. And I actually did a couple of attempts here before I got it really the way I wanted it. I ended up putting these on top of a gold filigree piece to stabilize the structure of the flower. And then I used E6000 again to secure them. I know it's not historically accurate, but again, I'm just going for the look here. And then finally, I put a black rhinestone in the center. And finally, I decided to scrap that idea altogether and start over. 
So I'm using a larger filigree piece here, which is gold also. And then I'm actually gluing those little teardrop beads on individually because I didn't like the way the strung method was working out. So I'm putting on the first four and then after that I'm putting on the other four on top of them. And finally that little black rhinestone goes in the center. I created the strands for this necklace with those little gold chevron beads and then I created the string for the other one with a piece of black cord that I already had. In the future, a nice touch might be to create my own cord, perhaps using the finger loop braiding method I can already use, but I think this cord works quite well for now. And here I am trying on some hat structure, which is actually going to be in the next video. So if you want to see how I made the hat for this, you're going to have to subscribe, or I mean you don't have to subscribe, but you'll have to come back for my next video, which will be all about making this crazy hat which is known as a henin. I'm really happy with the way this dress turned out. It was kind of a quick project because I'm quite experienced with making dresses of this similar pattern and I had fun kind of changing the pattern up a little bit and really just giving myself an opportunity to cosplay a famous person like Elizabeth Woodville because I mean she was super cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to come back for the hat video next time and after that I'll also be showing you guys how I got dressed when I put this on and went to do a fancy photo shoot. So make sure you come back and find me on all the social media if you want to do a shout out there too. And I will see you later. Bye bye.